Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Duke Football Coverage Podcast, brought to you as always by Bull City Coordinators. Please check us out at our website, bullcitycoordinators.com. And you can find us on Twitter at Duke FB Coverage. Our DMs are open. If you are a current player, former player, current coach, former coach, anybody associated in, in any way with the Duke football program, you know how to get a hold of me. And you can find us anywhere that you get your podcasts. Before we get into the interview today, which I'm very, very excited about because it will be a player who is currently on the team, the Coach Elko era kicking off. We've got a current player who is going to come talk about that a little bit and a little bit about what we can expect this upcoming season, how things are going right now. Before I get into to that, though, I want to give everybody an update on my daughter who is still recovering from her two surgeries, the appendectomy and then the bowel obstruction. Everybody who reached out to us during that time period that means a lot to us. Some of you who have never met me or spoken with me and just know me through Twitter said you were praying for my daughter and you were also keeping her and us in your thoughts. And that means a lot to everybody here in, in our household. And I do want to say she's doing very well physically. She's doing great. She's got a great mood. But just keep in mind, if you have kids who go through something similar, that a medical emergency can be a traumatic experience, and it is a traumatic experience in many ways. And you have to help your child through not just the physical recovery, but also the emotional recovery. So I just want to throw that out there for those of you who may be in a similar position as we are right now one day. Just keep that in mind. Okay. Now, turning to the interview, as I said, we got a current player on the football team, plays wide receiver. Where's number six? How are you doing, Eli Pankhole? I'm doing good. Uh, first, I wanted to say uh, I'm glad to hear that news about your daughter, though. I didn't know that was going on, so that's a good, it's a good thing to hear. Well, well, thanks a lot. It was a it was a rough week for us. She had an appendectomy, then she had the bowel obstruction, so she had two surgeries. She had a wound vac for a little while. The full story is going to kind of drop on a different podcast. I'm going to be on gotcha. drop in about a week. But thank thank you for saying that. That means a lot. It's it's yeah. been a crazy process. And again, anybody who's got family going through anything like that. Uh, you know, just keep in mind the emotional element of it too, for kids, kids are young and resilient, but they go, they go through a lot. Now, turning though, to the topics I want to discuss with you from interviewing your, your buddy, uh, Wolitzer, he mentioned that you're an incredible dancer. And my wife, my wife checked into that. She gives you very, very high praise on the dancing side of things. (laughs) Maybe it's just with me. She's a very harsh critic of things. (laughs) I yeah. just want to tell you, you've got a fan up here in Roanoke when it comes to your dancing ability. That's what's up. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep on dancing. Keep on trying to entertain everybody. I'm glad to hear that. Where did that come from, by the way? How did you get into that? Man, I, I've been dancing since I was really little. I mean, like I remember the first time I ever saw Michael Jackson is when I started loving dancing. And I would. I even had. There's some videos. They're lost. Like there's no way you could find them. But they're deep in the Facebook. Uh, vault and there's a video of me dancing to some Michael Jackson on the jukebox when I was like nine years old I had a Waffle House I had like this this little hat on I was doing doing the moonwalk and all that him yeah so he was like my first influence for us I've been doing it ever since I was young all right well tell us a little bit we're interviewing we're doing the interview here on a Sunday we're in the midst of spring ball how's that going for you guys really good you know it's a whole new whole new playbook but we're all adapting to it really quick the whole the culture of everything has been really good. Our uh, energy is the highest it's ever been since I've been here. Everybody's just really excited. Uh, they're, they're they're doing well with the change. They're adapting really well. Tell us a little bit about what you specifically are looking forward to this upcoming season, and then maybe how what you as a team are looking forward to this upcoming season. Uh, pretty simply to win. <laughs> I mean, we had these losing records, and and we're completely sick of it. We're ready to win, and that's what the coaches are bringing. That uh, well, I talk about the new culture. It's this attitude to have grit. So that, that basically means that we're not gonna we're gonna eliminate any excuse of loss. We're gonna we're gonna win no matter what. Well, you mentioned the coaching staff. Why don't we get into your coaches a little bit, and we'll go from position coach on up. Coach Burden, tell us a little bit about him, what he's like, what you've learned from him so far. Yeah, he's he's one of those coaches that he really takes time to care for his players and relate to his players. So he's someone that you want to work hard for because, you know, he's going to work hard for you. And, 
and it's and it's he comes from a place where you can trust him. You know, he played played the position. He knows what he's talking about. And he's he's teaching us stuff every day. I've learned a lot from him in the, just the couple of weeks of spring ball, and I have in being a a football player in general. And how is the mood of the wide receiver, uh, the wide receivers group right now? We know that Luca has come over and is playing there a little bit, and we of course you lost Jake Bobo, but tell us a little bit about the vibe in the receivers room. No, yeah, we're we're on a uh, really electric in that room right now. We got a lot of playmakers, like I said, Luca coming over here. He's an athlete. We got we got athletes that are just willing to make plays all around. So we got a lot of playmakers, and we're we're trying to um, put our, our team in good position to score every time that we get the ball. Well, let's step up from the position coach and go to the offensive coordinator. What can you tell us about Coach Johns? What, what should we know about him, and what is he like as a coach? Yeah, Coach Johns is a mastermind. That dude is all about attacking, and uh, he's he, the way he's making offense look right now is is really fun. So, like, the fans are going to love watching us play because we're full attack mode. No, you know, we're not being real conservative. We're we're trying to score touchdowns and make point and score points. Okay. Well, what can you? That's. That's great to hear. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. What can you tell us about Coach Elko? Yeah, Coach Coach Elko is super cool. I mean, he's he came into this position. You know, he didn't know any of us. He, he like I said with Coach Burton, he's, he's the same way. He came in, took the time to get to know his players, and he's really just this energy that he brings to us about you know we are winning football games and we're not selling for these losing records. Like like a lot of coaches talk about it, but he's really about putting action to the words and. And he's, it's really rubbing off on us. I, I've just noticed in the off-season workouts, and it's still off-season, but spring ball is technically its own season. Um, off-season and spring ball, it's just everybody's attitude is completely shifted from how it was when we were losing games and just kind of being like, you know, we got to we got to try to win. I'm like we are, we changed that mentality completely. So we're trying, we are going to win. And uh, Coach Elko has been a great influence on us for that, and he's also been great on getting everybody uh, fired up for the season which I love a lot. You talked about it a little bit already in regard to being aggressive and trying to score a lot, but what else, if anything, that you're allowed to talk about should we expect as fans watching the offensive unit this season? Um, yeah, I would say definitely, like I said, the excitement's going to be there. You guys are going to, it's going to be really fun to watch because we're trying to score points. I would expect, um, I don't know. Just expect expect to be up on your feet a lot. That's all, that's all I got to say. It's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun. Well, that's good to hear. Now let's turn a little bit away from that and get a little bit more into a little bit about you as opposed to the team. And it's a team sport, so I always yeah. uncomfortable talking so much about individuals when I do these. But you came to Duke at twenty in twenty nineteen. Is that correct, sir? Sure. And can you tell us? Because I know with COVID, there's been some additional eligibility, and we've talked about super senior years or whatever you want to call it. How many more years of eligibility do you have? Yeah, so after this year, I have one more because I came in. I was at one of the early enrollees. I came in mid-year. That's like halfway through my uh, high school season I came in. So this spring is the start of my senior year, and um, I'll have this season and then another one thanks to uh, COVID. Not really thanks to, but due to COVID. Yeah, that – there's nothing that's been really positive as a result of that, but uh, that's uh, that. I guess you've got to find the good in the bad with everything that we've gone through. Is looking at the additional uh, eligibility that you get. Well, let's talk a little bit about how you got to Durham and what brought you to Duke. Um, for me, it was just the people of Durham that I really enjoy. They just, it's a great community, and um, I just I liked how the people would. We at, or would uh, care for one another, and um, they, were, they were really welcoming to me on my visit. I just, and obviously, the Duke is a really high standard school, and you know when it comes to football, it's a contact sport, and you never know like when game, what game will be your last, when you're going to hang up the cleats. So I wanted to have a great education to fall back on, and Duke has good, um, has an amazing academic side as well as athletic side. So I feel like it was just a perfect fit for me. One thing that I like to talk to current players about are the academic demands of being at a high high profile academic place like Duke University. I'm not knocking the school that I went to, but it was not in that league of the place that you're in. And I think it's helpful for the fans to hear it from current players because sometimes, and we'll talk a little bit more about this later, the fans have unrealistic expectations 
uh, for the athletes and what they should be doing. And sometimes we don't really understand what you guys are going through. So could you talk a little bit about what it's like to manage or to balance playing at a top flight academic institution, the academic work, also playing in a top level football conference like the ACC? Mm -hmm. It's definitely something that takes, you know, it takes a group effort, it takes a team. And we have a great academic team here at Duke and um, they, they look out for us constantly. You know, they're, we have advisors that are constantly making sure, cause you know, it's, it's a lot. Like if you're, if you're a non-athlete, a student at Duke, it's, it's a lot. And so when you um, stack having a sport on top of that, first there's the, 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 the idea where a lot of people kind of um, have the stereotype that athletes not going to really perform as well as a, as a student will because they think they're just there for academic or just there for sports. And we try to disprove that every day by coming to class on time, you know, sitting in the front of the classroom, uh, participating to our best ability in doing our schoolwork as well as we can. And then aside from that, like I said, it's really time consuming. So we have a great team that has a lot of resources for us. So they'll be, they'll be keeping us on track, making sure that we're, you know, understanding our assignments, getting tutoring when it's needed. So it's, like I said, we have a great, great academic team. It makes it all doable. It's, it's difficult, but it's, it's 100% doable. Well, tell us where you're from originally and how long it took you to settle in there in Durham. I'm from Indiana originally. And um, I, I, like I said, I came in early. Um, I came in with four other people in my class and um, I, my two best friends that I've, I've been roommates with ever since freshman year I've made it really easy for me to get comfortable there and I've, I've felt at home ever since I got here honestly did the uh did the humidity of the summer has taken adjustment oh. <laughs> no that, that summer was definitely different I was not used to that the first uh summer camp definitely smacked me in the face but no nah, it was it was cool because I like the warm better than the cold 100 percent but yeah that was that was different all right now one thing that I'd like to talk to you about and ties back into what we were discussing with the education requirements and the athletic requirements, we saw one of your teammates retire this offseason, and that's why I'm asking this next question, because there's a lot that's going on with the football team that we don't know about, and there's a lot going on in the personal lives of the individual athletes that we don't know about, and I'm just curious kind of what you could tell us about maybe what we would need to know to be better fans and to be more supportive of the team generally and the players going forward. Yeah. I mean, and not, not any case in particular, but not like, you know, just in general with athletes. Um, I think, I think it's another great reminder with the whole Dwayne Haskins thing, you know, that's, that would, you hate to see that. That's really sad. And, um, and the way that some fans are reacting or even, you know, just saying things about, about like they're, they like they like to it seems that sometimes the actual you know humanity of of the person of the athlete is kind of stripped away sometimes they're seen as just they're just a, a a form of entertainment for some people and that's really that's really something that needs to be taken into consideration because a lot of that a lot of I mean everybody has the struggles everybody's going through some things but it's important to remember that you're all that you're human and so when you take that humanity aspect away from an athlete sometimes that can be really hard and I think everybody needs to go um, go out and seek help when they need it and everybody needs to be willing to listen and you know talk to somebody on a lot of different level when they're when it's needed so everybody's different but just to remember that humanity and everybody I think is very very important. Why do you think that that is so much and I can I can understand it a little bit more not that I agree with it with professional athletes who are getting paid to to play a sport or play a game. But with college athletes, you guys aren't getting paid and right. you're, you're classified as amateurs and it's a volunteer, it's a volunteer decision on your part. I mean, it's something that you choose to do. You don't have to do. And if you're not necessarily making a living off of it, wh where do you think that that comes from on the fan perspective with these expectations that we put on, some of us put on to athletes and people in your position. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm not, I'm not saying that, that, that like anybody's in the wrong for anything that they're feeling. I, I just think it's obviously if you're playing the game, you're, it's for a reason. And so it's either you you're in love with football or you, you, it's a good outlet for you to make money one day. So you're, you're doing it for a reason. And so that's obviously like you said, your choice, but 
what's important to remember is that whatever's going on, you can't really control sometimes. And so it's just important to take a step back aside from the football aspect or aside from whatever sport it is and just kind of touch base with someone there, like, you know, put yourself in their shoes with whatever situation they're going through. It might not have anything to do with sports. A lot of time it doesn't have things to do with sports. It could be something outside. You, you never really know. And um, so that's, that's all I'm really trying to say is obviously they chose to, to be, um, they chose to work super hard to be put in the spotlight. It's, it, it goes hand in hand. Like it's, it's not something that's just given to you. They, they have to work really hard to get in their position. So it's, it's not like, you know, I, like, yeah, I want to, I want to be famous one day. It's, and so let me, let me be famous and then let me not complain about anything. It's you had to work hours and hours and hours when nobody noticed. And you know, it's just hard at the end of the day. So I, I think it's just something to take in perspective. You mentioned work. The, the people in your position have to work really hard. Could you give us a little idea of what an average week for you is like when the football season is active, be it spring ball or during the actual during the actual season? Yeah, I mean, it's basically just you're waking up <laughs> before the sun comes up. And then you're going, you're going into practice. Uh, first, you, you go through meet, you go through hours of meetings and the preparation to get your body right. Um, this is all for us at, at Duke. This is all before the before our day actually begins because this is our this is all football stuff. Whatever we get all we get through practice, we get through everything. Take care of our bodies. You know, go to treatment if you need treatment. Got to make sure you're eating right. Um, get a couple meals in you. Then you got to go to class. So you got to get your mind back activated to wake up. I know you're tired after this long workout you just had, but you got to you got to get back into school, activate a whole new part of your brain. And then you get through school. Then you got to, you know, if, if this football stuff is important to you, you, come back to the to the facility, maybe get some extra work in because, you know, everybody's working hard right now. You're trying to you're not trying to be average. You're trying to be the best. So you got to work just as hard. Come back to the facility, get some more extra work in, study some tape. You know, at this time, the sun's starting to go down and you got to get to bed because you got to wake up early for the next day. So it's, it's kind of thing. It's kind of difficult to be finding the free time for yourself to kind of just relax. And I think that's another thing that goes to mental health too, is it's hard to find that time to yourself where you can just, you know, take a deep breath, but some people handle it better than others. And um, so just finding help for some of those people would be good. I think. Let's switch gears a little bit and talk about the name, image, and likeness side of things, which that's been pretty new for you guys. You're working with Ryan Wolitzer on that. Uh, tell us a little bit about how the NIL stuff has been working for student athletes like yourself. What, what should we know about it? I, I think it's, it's awesome. I'm really glad they're doing that because, like, like you said earlier, like we don't get paid to do this. But, um, these opportunities to get us money makes everything a little more worth it, I think, at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just it's just a really great way to get your name out there um, and kind of learn about business too because you're you're young and you're learning about these about these business opportunities you can do that'll take you a long way in the future. So it's been working out good for me. Um, I know a lot of teammates have had a lot of success from it. I see people on the internet have success from it. It's it's really great. It's a great thing. It's a blessing. Can you tell us a little bit about what? you have been using NIL stuff for, I think you've got like a little bit of an apparel line or something like that. Yeah. I got this little clothing line. It's called uh, kid at heart. It's, it's just kind of a, it's been a cool way to express myself. And um, I've, I've also done some other things uh, just like, like advertising things, but the, that one, the kid at heart one's one of my favorite things I've done so far, a, a way to get my brand out there. And um Use and having my football background be a good little platform for me is really helpful. Where can we go to find that? Uh, the link's in my bio. It's on Instagram at Eli Pankel. If you just click on my name in the bio, there's a little link right there. Click on it and get you get you a little T-shirt, sweatshirt, a hat. You know, we got a lot of we got a lot of good options out there. It's really cool. Well, that's great. I'll have to uh, one of these days get an Instagram account. Uh, that makes me sound super, super old, which is accurate. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. You should definitely get one, though. Well, I, I could get into a long, long rant about my concerns about Instagram's business model and the Facebook side of things, but that would just make me sound more old and grumpy. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't blame you.
Well, one, one thing, there's a couple other areas I want to cover with you, but one thing that I want to get into before we switch gears from this completely is I, I, I do think that it might be helpful for fans to keep in mind if you're going to complain about a player not doing something or, or, or a team losing a game, none of you guys are out there trying to lose. You're all out there to compete. You're all out there to get better. And sometimes the ball just doesn't bounce your way. And I can tell you, this stunned me. I've been – I'm saying this as somebody who spends his free time doing a Duke football podcast and running a blog about it, and I'm not making any money off of it. But, you know, if, if you're getting that upset over an individual play, as a fan, over an individual play or the outcome of a game – you might want to reprioritize a little bit about what your concerns are. Cause you know, when Duke lost to Carolina, not to talk basketball, but when they lost to Carolina in the final four years ago, I would have been furious about, I would have been so mad. I would have been angry, but one that happened on the heels of everything that I went through with my daughter and everything she was going through. And I just, it just wasn't that important to me as a fan. And, and at some point you have to realize you're fairly distant from these guys, right? And if you're this upset, just imagine how the players on the team are feeling, you know? Right, right. I just wanted to throw that out there to keep that in mind. Uh, I mean, it's good to have energetic and, and caring fans, people who are involved, but there's a, there's a balance, right? Yeah, that's a great point. Like it, it's, it goes to say, too, like, when your team wins, you know how excited you feel, how happy you are for them, you're so grateful for them. You got to be there on their side when they lose to you can't just switch up like that because that's that's not being a true fan you got to be there for the good times and the bad times that's right that's 100 percent right and the 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 team needs your support more when they're taking losses it's easy to support a team who's winning they really need the support to show people got their back when they're losing but we've talked a lot about the football team, we've talked a lot about how you got to do the NIL stuff, but tell us a little bit about yourself off the football field. Introduce us a little bit to Eli. Yeah, like you said, I'm, I like dancing. <laughs> that's something that's always been fun for me. I, um, I don't know. I, I just enjoy – I enjoy spending time with my friends, and I'm, I'm pretty much – I'm a big gamer. I like the game a lot. I play, uh, I play PlayStation and the Switch, Nintendo Switch, so a good amount of my time, my free time. Um, I love hanging out with kids. Any chance I get to just, like, you know, to go do a little camp with some kids or just uh, inspire the youth in any way possible because I know how important that was for me when I was younger, how much I looked up to to role models. So I just I love being a role model for anybody I can. Uh, you know, just having just having a good time. Any, any, time, any chance I get to just ease my mind and have fun, I'll do it because I know, I know how, uh, how stressful life can get. Tell us a little bit about the PlayStation games you play. My son is on that all the time, and my daughter's been playing Switch since she came home from the hospital. We don't have yeah. hard to tell her to stop, but just <laughs> a little bit about what games you like to play. No, it's addicting. I can't lie. It's very because you'll you'll be on there for what seems like ten minutes. You look at the clock; it's been like two hours. But I like I love to play Call of Duty. Uh, me and my friends play Warzone all the time. That's uh, one of my favorite games. Assassin's Creed's always been one of my favorite series. Um, I love on the Switch. I've played uh, Smash Bros. all the time. Big Smash Bros. fan right now. Um, those are my main. I play a lot of games. Those are my main ones right now, though. Smash and Call of Duty. Now, for those of you who follow the Duke football account on Twitter or Instagram, I believe that there was a video up there, maybe sometime early middle of March, about the tattoos that you have. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about? how you got into tattoos generally and do you have any new ones planned? Yeah. Um, it's really funny. Cause when I was younger, I never thought I wanted tattoos. I was like, there's no point for them, whatever. I don't know. I don't know if it was just kind of like getting in that culture of the athletes and I would see all of them with them made me kind of like them a little bit. But I really just fell in love with the stories that they can tell. Cause you, you see someone with a tattoo and you ask them about it and then they, you learn something about them. That's what really made me uh, get it. And so I, all right, when I planned my tattoos out, I made sure that they would, all of them would be, um, I wouldn't regret any of them. So it'd be something that would mean something to me and I could tell a story with. And the first one I got was my dad's last name. when He passed away. It was, he passed away a long time ago, but when I was able to get a tattoo, that was my very first one I got. Cause it was, it'd been sitting on my mind for a while that I wanted something 
to tell that story. But yes, yeah, so that was my first one. And then, um, like I said, oh, I, I didn't even mention something like I like, I was mentioning the things I like. I love anime. That's another thing I, I'm really big into. And so my next idea is to finish my right leg sleeve. It's going to be a whole anime uh, leg sleeve right there. Uh, and tell us what specific type of anime that you're into. I know there's a lot of different types. There's a lot of different, it runs the gamut of things. Again, we're going to, yeah. the next podcast interview that's going to come out involving me, you're really going to see how big of a nerd I can be at times. So this, okay, okay. <laughs> this is a good segue. Okay. This is up. This is up. No, yeah. I like, I like fighting anime the most. It's just the most exciting to me. Like uh, I got the one I have right now is a Naruto tattoo. It's a, it's a Vitachi. Tachi Uchiha, my favorite character, but I'm going to get Attack on Titan. I'm thinking I'm, I might either get, uh, I'll either get like an actual Titan or I'll just get like Mika, so she's, she's awesome. And then I'll get, um, I'm going to get a Demon Slayer tattoo, uh, Kilua, all my favorite characters from like my favorite shows. This is going to be a whole collage. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Well, it, as expected, you made zero references to the older stuff that I remember watching when I was <laughs> in high school. So I will not shame myself further by going into Ghost in the Shell and Vampire Hunter D and all that here. But we'll see. I need to get educated. Do what? I need to get educated on that because I, I haven't watched the old school stuff. Oh, yeah. Ghost in the Shell is classic. That is a classic one. They did a movie version of it with Scarlett Johansson a couple of years back. I liked it. It had a lot of criticism. I won't give away the ending as to why, but... Yeah, okay, yeah. I want to check it out. I want to check it out. Don't tell me. All right. <laughs> Spoilers. No, just kidding. <laughs> you mentioned your father's last name, and in watching the segment that you did for the... that got posted on the Twitter account and I think the Instagram account, you mentioned that Pankle is actually an Americanized version of a Greek name. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So my uh, great grandfather, when he came over from, um, they came from Greece, obviously, the last name was uh, Panagopoulos. And, you know, coming over here, they, they were, my, they actually didn't even, uh, they, my great, great grandparents stopped teaching my uh, grandparents agree they wanted to make them like speak just straight English you know during those times whatever they wanted they, they whatever they wanted is what they wanted and so they they went as far to change the name so I don't know I'm, I've been thinking about changing it back <laughs> sometimes because I, I really like it but yeah it's painful now from stemming from Panagopoulos. Well not to try to tell you what to do but I'm a lawyer so I'm going to give you some advice if you if you do that and no reason that you shouldn't or I'm not trying to tell you not to do it. I'm just saying, wait until you're done filling out standardized tests and bubble bubbling in your names anywhere. <laughs> That's going to take a while, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. Right now you've got it good. You've got what? Six, <laughs> six letters. Yeah, so yeah. once, once you're done with Scantrons and all that, that's. Yeah, I'll, I'll change it. Okay. Yeah. That's smart. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's smart. Well, uh, Eli, you, you've been kind enough to take some time with us today here on a Sunday afternoon in the midst of, of spring ball. Uh, take some time out of your day to, to talk to, to me about some stuff that I wanted to talk about. But you're a guest here, so what I'd like to do is give you a chance to open the mic up, open the floor up, give you a chance to talk about anything that you'd like. Okay, yeah. Um, I guess what, what, do you, what, are you most, what are you most excited about about this Duke season so far? I want to make sure we fill out your expectations. Uh, well, okay. So here, here is what I'm excited about. I think it was time for a change. I'm not. I'm not. I don't want to be critical. If you want to see what I think about the prior the prior couple of seasons, you can read my my blog. I think it was time for a change, and you see that a lot with coaches who've been at any school for a long time. A lot of times, you know, nothing lasts forever. It gets to a point where you need to make some changes. I think it's time to shake up the offense a little bit. And I, I thought for a while it was time to bring in a new offensive coordinator. I want to see what Coach Johns can do. He's got a great track record. But I also want to see guys get more opportunities and be utilized a little bit differently and to see what we can make of the talent that's there. Because I think anybody looking at the football program – and look, I've been watching this team since I was a kid – in the late eighties, early nineties. I mean, I've been watching them for a long time and this, there's a lot of talent there. You, you put four guys into the NFL through the draft, not long ago, there's a lot of talent there. And, and I just want to see the talent get utilized. You, you may not like me saying this Eli, but 
I understand that when there's a coaching change, particularly at a university like Duke with the strong academic requirements and the historical problems uh, with depth that have been there, it takes time to build up. You know, it took Cutcliffe five years to get to a bowl game, and he's one of the best coaches, certainly in recent history that we've had. So I understand it takes some time. I just want to see you guys go out there, be competitive, be in games, and show some promise for the next two or so years. I'm not saying that you can't win games. I'm just a little bit more of a let's be patient, let's see incremental signs of progress kind of guy. And look, I think you guys can do it. I think you guys can get to a bowl game. But if you don't get to a bowl game, as long as you guys are playing real competitive football, fighting on every play, not conceding anything, going out there every week and giving it your all and being right in the games, I as a fan am going to be happy. I'm, I, I'm going to be happy. But what I would really like to see in my wildest dreams for this season, I would love to see you guys get back to a bowl game. I would love to see you guys go bowling. Yeah. I, well, I can 100,000% sure you're going to get all the effort you could ever ask for. You know, we're going to, like I said, you know, we're, we're changing how we feel about ourselves as a team. And um, I, I expect us definitely to go farther than – than trying. I think we're going to get things done for you guys, for us too, but especially for the fans. I know that's been tough lately. Like it's been hard on us. So I know it's been hard on you guys too, but. Well, and I appreciate you asking the question of me. I understand I'm not particularly important in the grand scheme of all this. I mean, I, I know how hard from doing all the interviews that I've done with all the different players from all the different eras going back to the early to mid eighties. I mean, I get how hard you guys work and I would just for, for you guys, I'd love to see you guys have a winning season. I'd love to see you guys go to a bowl game. And I know you were, you came in right after our, our program's most recent bowl game in 2018. And so I think it'd just be great for you older guys who have been through what you've been through. You yeah, know. I agree. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, I mean it. I mean, you guys, you were there for for what happened in 2019. You were there for the COVID season of 2020, which was its whole different kettle of fish. And then last season, I mean, I, just for you guys, I would really love to see you guys go to a bowl game. I think that would be fantastic. And you know, the other thing though that I do want to see is I, I want to see the students show up at games. I want the students show up at games. I want to see them behind the other team's sideline. I'm tired of the camera always panning over there when I'm watching the game at home and seeing all the other team's fans. I'm sick of that. And so yeah. Delco. Yeah, that's too. yeah, no, it's a great, I, I thought that was a great move. I just want to see the fans go out there and show up and support them. And cause I mean, you know, nobody wants to show up to an empty stadium, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys want fans to be there. You you want them to be there. You want the – and I know it's a small student body, and I get that. But, you know, guys, to the extent that any current students are listening, go out there, man. Just go out there. Have fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, there's nothing like that, that support from your fans that can really change the atmosphere and change the momentum of the game. Like, that, that is so important. You know, that's why them Cameron crazies, like, we need some of that energy in our in Wall's way because it goes a long way. And we appreciate anybody that comes, honestly. Well, I've got to start getting with my guys to set up a trip to get down and watch you guys. I made it to a couple of games last year, I think three total. I had fun watching you guys as always. And I just, you know, I'm really excited to see what the offense looks like, but I'm also excited to see defensively how we scheme things. And I know I'm not going to ask you to comment on that. I know you, you guys can't get into that. So, but. I'm excited to see what it's going to look like. And I, th there's a real, I will say, you know, just so you guys can, can hear this, you on the team, there is a real sense of excitement and optimism amongst the fan base this year going into this season. And that's not been too terribly common the last couple of years, as I'm sure y'all are aware of, but right. I think, I think everybody's really, really excited and really wants to see some good things. And like I said, I'm much more of a, I don't necessarily want to say a pessimist, but I, I'm I'm really excited to see what you guys can do this season. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And for people who are listening, Coach Johns knows how to get teams to run the football. If you remember from the pinstripe bowl in, in 2015, 
he can he can find a way to get guys to run the ball because if I remember correctly, the running back for Indiana in that game was a backup who was playing because of injury. So this should be exciting this year. Yeah, definitely very excited. And I'm excited to see your reaction when we start playing for real. Well, I'm excited to see you guys. And, and Eli, I appreciate you coming on. I know you're busy, and I really appreciate you taking some time out of your day to have this conversation with us. For those of, of you – for those of you uh, who have been patrons of our site, uh, I appreciate it. Check us out, bullcitycoordinators.com. Send me an email, bullcitycoordinators at gmail.com. My DMs on Twitter are open, at Duke FB Coverage. We're still lining up a couple more guests to try to close out this season strong. We're going to do things a little different and have some previews for the ACC as a whole and also some specific teams. And when I say ACC as a whole, we're talking about Coastal. So we're going to do a little bit a uh, little bit of a different thing this season. See how it works out. See what you guys think. But again, we appreciate your support and go Duke.